Hi, welcome to Candy Shop Yarns. It's so good to have you here again. This is episode seven. It is March 2nd, 2023, and I am Deborah. I am your confectioner extraordinaire. I am the owner of Candy Shop Yarns, and which is a hand-dyed yarn company. And this is my maker's vlog where I talk about all of the things that I like to create and I primarily focus on fiber arts, um, especially knitting, and especially with an emphasis on my own hand dyed yarns because I am a yarn dyer. So I have some things to share with you, some updates on projects that I have talked about before. I also um, have a winner from last episode's giveaway. I have some really yummy gifts, a yummy gift that has come in the mail, and I have a horde of project bags to go through with you. It's quite embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> um, so I thought that I would get started with our giveaway. The giveaway is, let me show you, this gorgeous sparkly needle case and notions organizing pouch from Black Pearl Magic. And it has a place for you to put your yarn hooks or interchangeable needle tips and you can put the cords in here or other notions in here. You can put pattern notes, anything you like in here. So we have that. We also have a notions pouch with a really fun candy charm slash progress keeper. And inside are a few other goodies. We've got a sticker. We've got a, an enamel pin. And we have got a bracelet or um, stitch marker holder with a couple of unicorn horns. They are neon and fun. All of this is going to, let me find, Claudia Campa. So, the prompt for this giveaway um, in the comments last episode was share um, your favorite project that you have made to date. I totally understand. Quite a few of you said that's not fair to ask that. <laughs> it's true because as a maker, hopefully we make all of our favorite things. But Claudia said her favorite um, project was her first sweater that she knit. Um, and it was called the Ranunculus sweater, which has been a widely popular pattern. I have not made it, but um, I know many people who have. So, Claudia, to claim your prize, you need to contact me. Um, you can contact me through my email, which is in the description um, down below, candyshopyarns at gmail.com. You could also contact me through my Etsy shop messages. Um, so you could contact me either of those places and I need your first and last name and shipping information and I will send this off to you. You need to claim that before next um, episode, at which time then it will go to a new person. So I was also asked, well, what is my favorite project? So I thought I'd share what my favorite pro project is. So if we're going to talk about fiber related projects, which is what this vlog makers vlog is all about, then it will be a fiber -y project. And I actually had to think really long and hard about this, but it came down to which one have I made the most of? And it is my lucky star sock pattern. I have made, I think, seven versions of this. I've used that pattern for at least seven projects in various ways. 
but I have three that I have made, you know, to pat to the pattern. Well, this was my first one. This was my my draft of making making the writing up the pattern. And this one I had two striping sections on the toe and decided I wanted to change that in the final draft. And it has a heart on one heel and a star on the other heel. And so in the final draft, it has one section of stripes instead of two on the toe. And so I've knit two that look very much the same. This one, I was using some hedgehog fibers yarn. I don't remember the name, the main colorway. Um, and then just a whole bunch of little scraps, minis that I had dyed. Um, and that's actually what sparked this whole thing was I had all of these five gram balls of yarn, mini skeins of solid yarns. Um, that I, I just wanted to use them somehow. And I grabbed the mini skeins, the little balls of yarn. I just got a main skein of yarn I had in my stash and I just started knitting. <laughs> I just started knitting as I went and I drew a little chart for the star and it just kind of developed. I was in a very 1980s mood and it made me think of roller skating and the 80s, which is why it's called Lucky Stars because, of course, I can't think of the 80s without a song that sounds, well, I can't sing it, so. Um, anyways, if you're familiar with the song, you'll know what I'm talking about, but that's okay. So I've done those two, and then one of my testers had the brilliant idea of doing a black sock with neon yarns. And I thought, oh, she is smart. So I had to do the same thing. And these are the three versions of the sock that I have. The others I have knit and give away, given away to other people. But these have been so worn and used um, that they're quite <laughs> quite worn down now like the color is faded and they're getting kind of grungy which works for the 80s but I am really in the mood to make another pair so I might cast one on in the next couple of days because as we were talking about our favorite projects and I started thinking about what mine was, I thought, oh, I need to make another one. <laughs> so there's the three pair I currently have myself. So that was my favorite project. Okay, I've noticed in my previous episode, whenever I touch my table, everything shakes and it makes a noise on my phone. So I'm just dropping things onto the floor. I have a really nice mic. Can I get it to work? No. So <laughs> I have another not so nice mic. Can I find it? No. <laughs> Hopefully no biker gangs this week. But so I'm trying to be very careful and delicate not to bump my table because without a microphone, it translates that up into noise into my phone. Um, okay, let's see. I want to share something that came in the mail this week. It was completely out of the blue. I had no idea it was coming at all and it just made my day, made my day. So I mentioned um, during Christmas, the Christmas season, when I had a yarn advent calendar, a pattern that I wanted to make and I even started it and it's the baubles and berries scarf or wrap by Sandra Paul of Cherry Heart Designs and I started it and just realized I'm not going to enjoy making this in a like time crunch but I really love the pattern well somebody sent me one I'm not going to say who but a very 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 kind person made me one I even know this yarn this one is nowhere to go but up this is one of my yarns 
and I know one other yarn, but look how fun this is. This is the other one I know, and this one is Lemon Drop. Oh, that one. I love, I just love them all. I just keep going through and looking at each yarn and thinking, oh, how pretty is that color? Oh, how pretty is that color? Oh, how pretty is that color? And it looks so good. Oh, these three right here. Or maybe four. These three. That right there. That's heaven right there. Oh, how fun of a package is that to open? Just made me really feel loved. Ooh, that's pretty with this one right in the front. Oh, you see that one? Love it. Oh, so fun. That was just so kind and thoughtful. Oh, love it, love it, love it. Thank you so, so much. I've already reached out to say thank you, but I had to share it here because all of you makers will know what a labor of love that is. And not just a labor of love, but a sacrifice of yarn. That's, that's a big deal to me, so. <laughs> I feel very, very loved wearing this. Let me show you what I'm working on. So in last episode, I talked about a sweater. This one hasn't been released yet. It's still in the test knitting phase, but I did ask permission to share it. Um, so this isn't final photos. This is just a placeholder, but this is the Arconia sweater by um, Amy Loudon of Taylor S Studios. And I have knit several of her patterns, quite a few. I've knit her Bifeld mittens. Have I knit a hat? Amy, have you designed a hat? I don't think I've knit one of your hats if you have. I knit Polsden scarf at Christmas time instead of knitting, uh, crocheting this. I have knit two, oh, I just forgot, Whitmore sweaters. And I have knit the Putney sweater. So I've made quite a few of Amy's patterns and I've used quite a bit of her yarn because her yarn is yummy. She and her sister um, have dandelion and dogwood yarn. They are the owners and dyers of dandelion and dogwood. So I talk about her all the time, I know. Um, so that's the pattern and it's, it um, has a folded, ribbed neckline, drop shoulder, um, and the body, as far as I know, is like sits just right at or just below your natural waist. Um, so let me get out my project. I showed you the yarn last time. I was just drooling. It made me want to eat sweets because, I mean, it's this one's called sugar lips and this one's called cherry. and um, you can see there's variegations of color, reds and fuchsia and violet, just lots of pretty colors. And I'm holding this double. So in the last episode, I had knit my swatch by just starting the sweater and measuring that as I went. And the gauge was off. It was too loose. So I pulled it out. I was worried I wasn't going to be able to easily pull it out, but it worked fine. I, had, I really had no problem. Um, other than the cast on edge, that was the only edge that I struggled with and I ended up just not using that, just cutting that. Sorry, I lost a, dropped some stitches here. Um, and then I start, I went down a needle size and I started again thinking that I would get gauge this time, but you know what? My gauge was the same. <laughs> I think I was just relaxing more. And so I thought, oh, I need to rip it out again and go down another one or two needle sizes. And then I was looking at the fabric that I got and I really liked, I really liked it. It must be different. It, it has to be a tighter gauge because the fabric I was getting previously was too loose and I don't feel like this is too loose, but look at what I've got. Is that not 
gorgeous. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it. Um, but I was worried about it being too big and I was going to start it again. And then I thought about it. I thought, I kind of like the idea of this being a bit bulkier, oversized. Um, it's drop shoulder already, so it doesn't need to sit right at my shoulder. So it's okay if it goes down a little bit farther. I don't want it dramatically farther. Um, but I was off by two stitches, um, according to what the gauge swatch was. Now my row count was the same. And so I was worried that if I just continued on that it would be wider, but it would still be the same length and that that might pose an issue with under the arm but trying it on, it seems to be fine. So I just decided I'm just going to keep knitting it and it will be slightly oversized this way. And I can adjust the length to however I want it to be. So that's fine. So in the end, I'm just not really worried about it because I'm happy with an oversized sweater. I mean, I have got a very oversized cardigan on right now. Let's see, I don't want to bump this table. Let's see if I can show you. It is a very boxy wide. This is one that I've just purchased somewhere. But I mean, here's the, my body. Here's the, the ease. <laughs> now, it's not meant to be worn like this because you'd have to hold it that way the whole time. It's just meant to be open. So it's very boxy. The one I will be knitting is not going to be oversized like that but I do like an oversized sweater um, at times. But I love the fabric. I love the texture. I like that it's just a simple design, but the yarn is giving it, you know, a little bit more pizzazz. I am not alternating skeins because alternating skeins with two textured yarns sounds like a nightmare to me <laughs> and I'm one that would say always 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 alternate well I'm breaking my own rule but it's looking great so I'm happy with it and we'll see once I start on the next yarn on the next ball hand dyed yarn is inconsistent by nature even commercial yarn is inconsistent I was just talking with some friends about this and I have a pair of socks that I knit with commercial yarn and it's it's a self-patterning sock yarn and the pattern itself is slightly different from skein to skein so you have to keep it in the same dye lot but even with that things can be you know inconsistent so commercial yarn changes depending on the fiber content like that they're able to source in that batch versus another batch so you know even done by machine, things cannot always be 100% consistent. So hand dyed yarn, we get because it's art and it's fun, but it does require more finessing to get the effect you want. So that's why I say always alternate skeins and I'm not in this one. <laughs> so I have, you knit the upper back first down to the armhole and then you turn and you pick up some stitches and you knit one side then you knit the other and then you join them together here and knit down to where the armhole joins and then you join it in the round and keep going and so there is a lot of knitting one way and purling and then knitting them purling and then when you join together it's all knit stitch um, and one thing to note that gauge can change when that happens when you switch from going from knitting to purling back and forth to joining in the round and going around and around your gauge can change so you want to watch for that and change your needle size if needed but my gauge has stayed the same so that's that's good so i'm almost done with the first skein of each i'm getting close and they're not the exact same yardage, so one will run out before the other and I'll just throw in the next one as needed. So the needles I am using right now 
I am using, I just wondered, what if my gauge shouldn't change because I didn't actually change needle size? <laughs> I've done that before. Oh, I did. <laughs> All of a sudden I thought, oh, I think I did my two swatches in the same needle, but I didn't. Um, I'm using a US 6 4 millimeter needle on a 24 inch cable. I love Chiagu Red Lace. That is my favorite, favorite needle because the tip has the right amount of point to it without it being so much that it, you know, kills your fingertips. It's not too dull for trying to do knit two together and lacy patterns. And also where the cable joins the needle, it doesn't catch on there. It stays smooth. And also the cable doesn't have so much memory that it's always flipping funny. I've tried a, I've tried a lot of needles. This is what I ended up with as my favorite. I was just talking with a friend. I haven't tried signature needles, signature needle arts needles. <laughs> I haven't tried those before. I mean, I've tried them at a convention, at a, at a fiber festival where they have a, a booth and you can sit there and try knitting on something, but it's not quite the same as doing a project with it. So, um, that's one I still haven't tried. I'm trying to think of any others. I don't know, but that's, that's still on my list to try. This is in a project bag from Jewels of So Sweet Violet. I've had this one for quite a few years. It's her Liberty Rainbow bag that she has made. Well, let's see, is this the Liberty Rainbow? I'm trying to remember what she called it. I think that's what she called it, but I've just had this one for a long time. Love that one. Okay, next project. Let me reach it. This is in a bag basket that I made last summer that I thought would be great for picnics, but I find it's just a great project bag too. Um, I made it with a quilt that I found at just a, just a store. I found a quilt, cut it up, and thought that would be a fun bag. And then I found this basket with the rope edging and thought I can stitch that on and make a picnic bag basket. So my family, we like to go to, there's a local amusement park near us and we like to go there in the summer and we take a picnic with us. And I just thought this would be such a fun, a fun picnic bag. So it's in my picnic basket bag. <laughs> this is the Fragmentation Shawl by Stephen West of West Knits. I brought this up last time and I showed you three different um, color combination options. So right here, I'm going to post the three options that I had. Um, one was from all from my shop. Um, another one, two more were from my own stash. One was a more muted palette that was a lot of speckles and just, just more muted and it wouldn't stand out like a really bold pattern. And then the third one was a summery palette. I thought this is, this is bright and colorful, all from my stash. Uh, one or two of them were from my shop, but I ended up choosing, da, 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 da. let's see, can you guess which one I chose? I made a swatch for it. This is the one I chose, the summery palette. What I did is I took each skein, I caked them all up, I made a swatch card where I wrapped the yarn around it to get an idea of the color order I liked, and I have it labeled on the back what each of the yarns are. Uh, two of these were a gift for my daughter for Mother's Day last year from Yarn Cafe Creations. We were at a fiber festival. I was a vendor there and one of my friends, Christy, um, owns Yarn Cafe Creations and I love her yarns. She has just gorgeous colors and my daughter went and picked two out. I thought that was really sweet and I love them. So I made that swatch and then I thought, you know, 
what if I don't like that order? So I went and I took the pattern page. He has a coloring sheet where you can color in to see the effect. I kept his color order placement where he was stair stepping the colors each wedge up and up and up. So I kept that idea and just plugged in my own colors. I didn't finish coloring the whole thing to see if that was something I would like. Let me see. So after I colored that, I thought, yep, I like it. Let's give it a go. So let me show you what I have. I have one, almost two wedges finished. starts with a little crescent shape. You then put all these stitches, live stitches on a stitch holder or I have it on waist yarn. And then some of these stitches you use to knit a little, not a pentagram. I forget the name of the shape. Oh, okay. Maybe it is pentagram. No, because that would be five. And this has four. Okay, it doesn't matter. Anyways, and each one of these, you're increasing a couple of stitches. And so it gets larger and larger and larger. And then after you finish that, you go back, pick up some more stitches, knit. And as you knit down, you're getting, you're getting some stitches from the first wedge and joining it together as you go. So let's see what I've got here. So I'm almost done with this second wedge. I have one, two, three, four more stripes to go before I've finished this wedge. And then I will go back and pick up some more of these live stitches and continue down. So you can see I have stitches on the needle here. And as I go along and knit, I just pick up another stitch from the edge and it's very, very clear and easy to do. He has great tutorials that help you with every step of the way. So if you get confused, he shows you exactly how to do it. It is a very basic pattern, like basic to knit, but very interesting in construction. And it just makes it fun because you're always changing, always changing colors, always changing, you know, how big the row is. So it starts out itty bitty and it takes almost nothing and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But each wedge is only this wide. So, you know, it's it's bite size manageable pieces. Um, the edge has a cable, an I-cord edge. Now look at all my ends. I have woven them in, but you can see the I-cord edging here and along the bottom here. Um, I wove in all of my ends as I went. The, it, the very first couple of sections I didn't, I wove those in, I mean, after I knit them. But as I would go along, I didn't do the Weave and Steven method. Um, I have my own that I like to do. And it's like knitting color work in two hands. So if you do color work, then you may be familiar with this, where you have one color in one hand, one color in the other. And when you go to catch floats, you catch floats by tucking the needle under, you know, the yarn under before you knit the stitch. I'm trying to think. It's like catching a float, but I do that every other stitch as I'm knitting. And so the tail end I'll have in one hand and I will be going under, over, under, over, catching it as I knit that in. So I do that with the first strand, but then I have the second one that still needs to be knit in, and I do that after. That probably didn't make any sense. But at the beginning of each row, I will have the tail end of this color and the tail end of this one I'm working in. So one will get woven in, the other one I will end up doing with a tapestry needle by hand after. 
and then I will continue on doing that. So every other one, as soon as I am finished with like this section, I will weave in that one strand I have left from here. And when I finish this section, I will weave in that one strand. And I started out cutting them short, <laughs> which was a mistake because as I was knitting, I noticed that they were all poking through in the front. I thought this is not going to work. <laughs> Tucked them back to the back and started leaving them longer. So they're longer. And then after I block it and it's all done, then I can go trim them short. A lot of the times I don't even end up trimming them. If it's inside a sweater, inside a sock, inside a cowl, inside a hat, but a shawl you see both sides. And so I will want to trim these short and ends can still work their way through to the front. So I do what many people gasp at. <gasps> and I will take a little dot of freight check or a fabric glue and just put a tiny, tiny dot right where I've cut it just to make sure it stays. It's my knitting and it's my project, so I can do whatever I want. There's no such thing as knitting police, and if there is, we have a problem. <laughs> so do what you like. Do your magic knot ball if you like that. It's your project. Do the Russian join if you like that. It's your project. Tie them in a knot if you like because it's your project. Who cares? It's your project. The only difference is if you're going to enter it into a competition somewhere, then they have an issue with certain things and you have to weave it in, no knots, no glue, no, you know, like, but I'm not entering mine into a competition. I just want to wear it or give it as a gift. So this makes me very happy because the colors are just playful and fun and you can see how it stair steps. So this one now moved up, up one stripe and on the next row, the next wedge, it will move up one stripe and it will give it a kind of, if it were to continue on into a full circle, it would make a spiral, but it's just very fun, fun project. I shared all of the yarns in the last episode, so I will just have them listed below and you can watch the previous episode if you want to see more about, um, about all of the skeins of yarn. So I have been a monogamous knitter, but now I've got two projects and my time is divided between those and I don't get as much done on either of them, but I have had a lot more knitting time the last two weeks because of some storms. Um, we had a major snowstorm come through and just like a lot of people have in the US. So we were pretty much homebound for two days and can't complain because that's when I got a good chunk of this done. I figured out that it takes me about a week to knit one wedge if I'm knitting on this almost exclusively, but I have my sweater I want to work on. So it may take me longer than a week. If it takes me a week, then this would be done in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. But I suspect it will take me a little bit longer, especially because I want to start some socks. <laughs> That's okay. It's my knitting. I can do what I want. Let me put this away. All right, so what was the other thing I was going to show you? I had, oh, yes, yes, project bags. <laughs> um, I love project bags. I like to make project bags. I like to use project bags. I like to hoard them. <laughs> Uh, the same friend who sent me the shawl that I showed you, just a minute, <coughs> got some fuzz up my nose <laughs> from, from all the stuff I was showing you. Um, the same friend who sent me the Bobbles and Berries shawl, uh, scarf, she had previously sent me some fabric. She said, I saw this fabric and thought of you and it is the cutest fabric of all. So I'm gonna show you the fabric. Let me get that. Here is the fabric. It's 
by Michael Miller. Isn't that adorable? I love it because it's just the cutest little kids with their sweet treats, but it definitely has a vintage vibe to it. And I was in the mood to just sew something for the fun of it without it being a major project. And so I thought this is the best fabric for that project because it's just fun and lighthearted. So I decided to make myself a big floppy project bag. I usually do more structured bags, but I wanted a floppy drawstring bag with a ruffle on the top. So that's what I made for myself. It is a good size to hold a nice large project. And I don't remember where I got this fabric from when I bought it, but I think I bought it shortly after she sent me this fabric because I thought it would go with it nicely. Um, and thinking I was gonna make a baby blanket, but I decided I wanted to keep it for me. So I made myself one of these and there was enough fabric for me to make a second one for this friend. And then there was just a little bit on the side of it and I thought I could save that for fussy cutting projects or notions pouches. And I decided I'm just gonna make it into a project bag. It's just an itty bitty project bag, but look at that. With pom poms, a drawstring, cause I love a drawstring because it doesn't get stuck in your knitting in the yarn. No bicycle, bicycle gang. I had enough to make two of these and two of these. And then I went to go put it in my project bag drawer and realized I had a problem. I couldn't even fit another one in there. So I thought, let's look through the project bags. Are you ready? We're going to now have a project bag parade. We're going to just go through. Now I have already gone through some in the last couple of years and de-stashed, gave some to family and friends. I have some friends that if they start knitting, I'll give them a bag, um, just things like that. But these are the ones that I currently have. So we're gonna go through them quickly. Here is a zipper pouch that I like to use for socks. This is from my daughter. She gave this one to me for Mother's Day. This is a project bag I made for my husband for when we go to Disneyland and we like to knit in line and he wanted his own project bag. So it needed to be basic and my daughter added little buttons on them. And this has been used and used and used and it's one of those that it is so bl bland and basic that it gets used the most. This is one that I made for one of my daughters um, because she loves Star Wars. And we were trying out some embroidery on the bottom. This is one from Black Pearl Magic. I did um, some work with her and I have this bag and I have another one in here that we will see in a minute and another one that I gave to my sister. This is a bag that I made. I've made a lot of bags and I liked just adding a little charm. Like this is so I could have a stitch marker or progress keeper on hand all the time, but I find I don't use those. I just like how they decorate the bag and they're just fun. And this is the size that I use the most because I primarily would knit socks and it's a good size for socks. I love this one. This one is from the paper soiree. I love, not the paper, the knitted soiree, knitted, knitted soiree. And love that one. This one is from Steel City Stitchers. It was a gift to me. It is also another one that's like great for one cake of yarn and it's good for like nine inch circulars because you don't have long cable or many needles so you don't need a lot of space in it. And it's a good one for if you're going somewhere and like movie knitting because it can just have your yarn come out here and just knit 
on the nine inch circulars and nothing's in the way. Here's one I made just with a super fun, happy fabric, slightly larger for like a shawl. And then I have a series, oh, where are they? Well, there's some more of my Disneyland bags. So these are a lot of Disneyland bags because my family, we they used to all take a project with them because they'd get bored waiting in line. And at one point, everybody in my family knit. So we have this one, this one, and then I have these two. And this is one I take, mo well, both of these, I alternate which one I take while I'm waiting in line. And they both have the same lining. It's just a good sock size. And I have another one. Where's my other Disney? Here we go. This isn't for waiting in line though. This is just on the trip that I made this one. And this side has got a clear vinyl viewing, <laughs> what am I trying to say, panel. And then I put a zippered um, pocket in here so I didn't need a Notions pouch. Though I did make a Notions pouch, but. Uh, so that's my, I had some other Disney ones. I have one other one somewhere. But the other ones I have not kept. Uh, then I have another sock sized one that I've made. I've just made a lot. I realize I've just made a lot of them because they're just so fun to make. This one was from Nicola of Bumble Stitches. She sent this one as a gift and oh, I love this at Christmas time, but I think it's so cute. I, I use it anytime. I don't care what time of year it is. It's just adorable. And once again, love that size. And then this is one from, don't have the tag and I know who it is, but I can't remember. Oh goodness. Little Bitty Delights, Manda from Little Bitty Delights, her sister was starting making project bags. Oh, I have another one in here from her. I'll have to find that in a minute. Um, and this was one like a, a prototype that she had made. And this one was a gift. My brain just went blank. Cherie, did you send this one to me? Seems like Cherie sent this one to me, though I could be wrong, of Ollie and Bella. Another fabulous sock knitting one. Oh, here's another Disney bag, but I didn't make this one. This was from a friend, from my friend Kimberly, and she made me a matching notions pouch. This was from when I did, I used to make project bags that I sold all the time. That was primarily what I did, but I had a project bag of the month club and I would have a bag that was themed by the time of, for the time of year. And then there would be a matching mini skein and then um, a little extra, usually like a notions pouch or something fun like that. And this was one for March. And this is another one for my friend Kimberly, adorable. She also made me this one. So I really like those. This one is from Amy Loudon of Taylor S Studios, and it's fabulous because of that rose gold glitter. Oh, love it. Got a little charm on here. Another project bag of the month club bag. This one was for the springtime. It is a drawstring bag. I need something in it so you can see the, the fun shape of it. It's a little bunny and the handle are bunny ears. Oh, what, I've got some yarn stuck on there from a project long ago. <laughs> and the fabric on the top are little woodland creatures and in the lining as well. This one is from Cherie of Ollie and Bella. I know that completely. I know that for sure. But the other one, my brain just blinked. And this is a patchwork bag that she made. And I love the quilting that she did on that. And cherries. Oh, love cherries. Strawberries. Polka dots. All that. Okay, we've got some of my own bags from Candy Shop Yarns. And this is the size I typically make now for my shop. 
And like I said, I really like a drawstring bag because the drawstring becomes the handle and it still leaves room for me if I have my project out, but I can let the yarn feed through and closing it, it won't zip up over my yarn. Though I still love a zippered bag too. I have no problem with zippered bags. This was a gift from my knitting group. We did a secret swap and my friend Wendy learned to weave so she could make this. I just thought that was the coolest thing. I showed this before on this channel. This was a bag from my daughter. I don't know who the maker is, but my daughter gave this to me for Mother's Day along with the two skeins of yarn from Cafe Creations. Oh, got a hiccup. And um, this is what she gave me with it. And the colors went well together. And then I have this one from uh, Love to Sew. Carolyn loves to sew. And then I have another Disney one. This was one of the reusable shopping bags they have there, but I thought it was a fun project bag. That's my first stack. Are you ready for some more? Okay. This was a friend, uh, a gift from a friend for, um, she didn't go to Yarndale. She ordered this. However, one for herself and one for me and some yarn from there and a cute matching pin. So we both have the tote from Yarndale. Then I have, I have another one in here that goes with it. I'll just have to get to it as I get to it because it's in there somewhere. This is a Harry Potter bag um, from my friend Victoria. She started selling these, but she doesn't anymore. So I won't give you her information, but I like that one. And then I forgot, I had this one. This was from a long time ago, an Alice in Wonderland bag. And I made myself this bag and I just had the tiniest scrap of fabric left of her face. And I used that to make a teeny tiny pin cushion but this one is like a shawl sized or small sweater. My sister, Emily, speaking of which, Emily, if you have found me here from Meanwhile at the Castle, my sister, Emily, and I had a podcast, Meanwhile at the Castle, and she has since started her own. We haven't been doing it together because our schedules are so challenging to get together. Um, and so, she has her own Salt City Knits podcast, so go check that out. So here was a project bag I made myself years ago, but I couldn't find any more fabric. And at Christmas time, one of my friends gave me this project bag. So that was super happy. Love it, love it, love it. So when I bought the fabric, it had sold out, I couldn't find it online, but obviously they have since been making it again. So I love that. And then she gave me some fabric that has a different, it's like a different colorway. So it's the same fabric, different colorway. Um, possibly similar to this one, but this one's a canvas. This one is a quilter's cotton. So I could make myself another bag. This is one I made for myself and friends. Um, Mine, I didn't have on the other side. I had a panel of like a parade with a unicorn and little kids dressed up in fairy tale clothing and stuff. And so I didn't have enough for me to have that. So, but I did put this bunting on the back of everyone's bag. So I made myself one with that on both sides. Here's another Disneyland bag. I guess I have a lot of them. But this one I made red, white, and blue for the summertime because I love Americana patriotic stuff. And this one is a larger one, so it's not necessarily a sock size. And then I have one from my sister for a group of us. And she had uh, Tiffany, I don't remember her business, but she embroidered some patches for our little group. This one is from Jewels of So Sweet Violet and it was one of her calendars, her advent calendars. 
and I picked this colorway. There's this one and I think a blue one, I think. I think I picked this one. And then I have another Christmas swap. I used to do a Christmas project bag swap. I did that for three or four years, I'm trying to remember. Um, and this was one of the one of the swaps. This one says Party of Five Crafts. And it is a fun Christmas nutcracker one. I've got a lot of my Christmas ones here. This was a gift from my friend who um, made it from kitchen tea towels. And that gave me the idea because I thought it was so brilliant. She's so smart and creative. Gave me the idea to make some as well. So I made my own with this towel. And I have a couple of others that I have made that I will get to in a minute. Another Christmas bag from my friend Kimberly. Super cute. Another one that I have made. And a friend gave me a pom-pom and I just thought it was so fun I had to attach it some on something. So I just stuck it on this bag. Oh, that's who it was, Southern Sparrow Handmade. Tiffany of Southern Sparrow Handmade. She did this embroidery. And this embroidery, I love this bag. And look at the fabric inside, a whole bunch of yummy sweets. Another bag from Taylor S Studios. It was Little Taylor S, now it's Taylor S Studios. A Liberty fabric. This is another one I made from a tea towel, but I made it a different direction, made it wider. So this is a kind of a big one and I made it um, reversible so I could turn it whichever direction I liked. If I wanted this on the outside or I wanted this on the outside. And another Disneyland fabric. Are you getting sick of these yet? <laughs> Haunted Mansion, this, the fabric was a gift from a friend as well as this label. And then I got the other fabrics to make this bag. And then this is a gift from my friend, um, Eggs and Crackers Makes. I was trying, it's Robin, but uh, Eggs and Crackers Makes on Instagram. She made this for my birthday. It has little woodland creatures celebrating a birthday and she did some uh, quilting patchwork on there. This is an early, early one I did. This is one, I may have made another one. No, I did, a, I did a gingerbread house, that's right. This pattern is from Burlap and Blossoms. Yes, Burlap and Blossoms. And um, just thought this was a fun design. It looks like the old fashioned claymation Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I thought. So I made myself a bag with reindeers on the back. And then at one point I had a sock project, a sock set that was a Dr. Seuss cat in the hat. I think it was called thing one and thing two um, sock set and I was making socks with it. So I made myself a bag to match <laughs> as one does. And this is, now we're getting down to some of the first bags I ever made this one I shared this fabric um, these hexagons I made this bag and one other one for my sister so we could have a sweater you know sweater size bag and this is one of the very first bags I made this one might be the first project bag I made it might be I can't remember for sure but I used to just do embroidery when I would sit and watch a movie because I didn't like to just sit um, before I was knitting. So I had a whole bunch of embroidery, little just embroidered panels of pieces of things here and there, and I didn't know what to do with them. So I just had a stack of them. And when I started knitting, I thought I'll make this into a project bag. So it has a round bottom and I put the embroidery panel in the center.
So I think this one is the first one I made. Okay, we're almost to the bottom. This is a Coco Knits bag that I got for Summer Sock Camp this last year, and I added the patch to it because I thought this made me think of just camp in general. So when I participate in that, I use this one. And this is um, Farmhouse Sewing Cafe. That's who it was. I was gonna tell you about one of the bags that I got. Oh, it was the little, it was the, the prototype bag um, from so Farmhouse Sewing Cafe. And this is a fun wintry bag and it has a, like a thick foam batting inside of it. So it is a very structural bag, which I like structural bags a lot because they'll sit on the floor and sit open. Okay, we're almost to the end. This one is a Halloween project bag. And now I just forgot who, oh, eggs, that's right. It's like, this one is recent. I got this one just last year, Eggs and Crackers Makes. She made me the little birthday Woodland Farm animal one and I got that cute bag. Okay, and here is my other tea towel project bag. That is a lot of bags. That is so many. That is too many for one person to have. So I decided I'm going to go through these bags and I'm going to sort through them and I'm going to start using them as giveaways. Let me know in comments if you like that or if you like, I don't want somebody's used project bag for a giveaway. Um, but I have the tallest stack, like it's so tall that I have them in multiple piles <laughs> because it's pathetic and not just that. But I know I'm going to want to make more and it's something that's just so fun to rotate through and refresh and to, you know, just find new ones. It's just fun. It's fun. So I'm going to start sorting through those and giving them away on my podcast here. So, so I need to maybe downsize by about a third so I don't feel guilty with how many I have or guilty if I decide to make or buy more. <laughs> oh, did I have anything else? I did our giveaway. Um, okay, so we're an hour in. I was going to do a health update. I think I will just say that I've had a lot of a lot of things I'm working on and some of them may prohibit my ability to speak well um, in the next few weeks and if that's the case I may not be on here for a little bit. I'm hopeful that I can get one may maybe two more episodes up before then um, but I'll just have to see what happens <laughs> and how my speech is afterwards, but I'm going to have a jaw appliance and I don't know what to expect, honestly. So we'll just see. We'll just see how it goes. Thank you for joining me. We didn't have the motorcycle gang go past. We did have fire truck and ambulance, but I live right by a fire station. So that's to be expected. It doesn't bother me. Um, I. I rarely notice it unless somebody else is here or I'm recording a video. So <laughs> my children learn to sleep through it. They would wake up when I would like tiptoe across their room so quietly they'd wake up. The sirens from the fire truck and ambulance going, they could sleep right through it. <laughs> oh, so. I hope you have a really good day. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye.